I make what I like to call mica powder paint using some Mod Podge and mica powder pigment. Mica powder pigment is used to mix with a bunch of things. You can put it in epoxy, you can put it in soaps, you can put it in makeup. People use this to add a little bit of shimmer in all kinds of things. Just make sure whatever type of mica powder you are purchasing, the directions are followed correctly for whatever you're mixing it with. And as you can see here, there are a ton of color options for you to choose from. And if you're wondering what mica powder I use, here they are. The link for them is down in my Amazon affiliate link in the description box. And you'll notice like I'm missing a couple because I use mine, so they're not all here. Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday, people. Today we're gonna be using this mod podge and these mica powder paints with some of Dollar Tree's tea light candle pieces and a little wood tag for me to share with you how you can create your own mica powder paint, what I do with it, how I use it, and some other little tips and tricks to create your own. Please keep in mind that these tutorials are a little bit lengthy. I do talk as we go, so I am actually talking right now as I am doing the crafts or DIYs. So they tend to be long-winded. They're meant to be like that. And they are meant to be step-by-step. Step. This type of content is not for everyone and that is completely understandable. But for those that want things broken down, these tutorials help people create things knowing who, what, when, why I do exactly what I'm doing. For those of you wondering, what is mica powder paint? This right here. These are my most recent mica powder paint creations. Absolutely stunning. These definitely took several coats to be able to get this look and they are ombre, so they blend. And it's just using some Dollar Tree supplies. I can pop the video down in the description box where I made these. The biggest question I get is can you seal over this once you're finished? Now you absolutely can. Mod Podge can be used as a glue, a sealer, a finish, collage, you know, all the things, all the things. And I use Mod Podge for all kinds of stuff. Feel free to seal over it if you want to. However, you do not have to. You're gonna see right here, see this ring? Watch, you can hear it. I am absolutely, this has been about three weeks of curing, three, four weeks. I think it's been how long I made that video. Don't quote me. And you're gonna see, and this is a stainless steel ring, okay? It's nothing came off on that. This is completely cured. And in case you're not familiar with it, Mod Podge takes about four weeks to cure, okay? So in the event that you do make this, or you use Mod Podge to seal over things, you decoupage, things like that. I get asked that question a lot. Why is it still tacky? It is possible it will be. This is not right now. This is not tacky anymore. But it can be tacky for several weeks after you make something like this. If you're going to do this for a gift or you're going to do it for decor that's going to be sticking or next to something else, make these ahead of time and then just kind of like over there, forget about it, come back a month later, and they should not be tacky. It is rare that I come back to anything I've Mod Podged and I've let it cure the full four weeks and it still has a tacky texture onto it. But I personally do not put any sealers over anything that I do my little my mica powder paint. <laughs> I don't actually ever go back over them. I want to be completely transparent and let y'all know that if there is another name for this, I am completely unaware with it. I personally figured out how to do this on my own by mixing things throughout creating thrifts and creating crafts. And this was just something that I discovered when I was making different things. And ever since then, I've called it mica powder paint. So if there's another name or somebody else calls it something else, feel free to write it down in the comments. I am completely unaware of it. I like to take the Mod Podge and pour it on the side. I'm just going to use this container for today. So this way we can kind of keep a control, which I never do. I'm just letting y'all know now. I don't measure this stuff, okay? Usually I am just kind of winging all of it, but for the sake of the video, and since I want you to be able to be able to make this at home, we're going to try and keep it controlled, all right? So I'm going to put about a tablespoon, and feel free if you feel like you got to measure it, you go right ahead. I cook with love, you know what I'm saying? 
that looks like about a tablespoon to me we're gonna call it done all right we gotta we gotta clean that up though hold on it's also a good idea to make sure you have a little mask on. you can make sure that you have i have the ventilator pieces too so you could wear those these just help prevent you know those little spores getting in you if you want to wear the ppe with the eye coverings go right ahead i don't always wear gloves whenever i'm making this stuff but since i'm doing like this whole video right here i'm going to just make sure i have this stuff on just to be safe sometimes this can irritate your skin if you're not familiar with it so please keep all that in mind and again, I'm going to reiterate that it is really important whenever you're using anything to make sure you read the directions and go according to whatever they're recommending. We got our PPE on, we have our gold color picked out, and I have our little tea light. I, again, I measure with love, okay? Now, I've had wonderful, wonderful people tell me because a lot of times I just, you know, little tappity tap 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 and sometimes that goes horribly wrong and turns into a huge splat and then you got a lot more than you need but one thing i will tell you is the more you put in here the less layers you have to do the deeper the pigment is if you want something with a real light sheen that just kind of covers over then you're going to want to use a very very little amount of pigment but this is probably about two teaspoons maybe a teaspoon for sure a full teaspoon a little bit over and a tablespoon of mod podge next we're just going to mix this up and you can do this a number of ways i happen to have this on hand you don't have to use this people use a dish sponge does not matter it could be a sponge it could be one of those little pouncers use whatever I do not typically use a paintbrush until after I've got at least the first coat on whenever I'm dealing with glass. And a lot of times I use this for glass. I will put this over decoupage pieces. I've put this over as little accents on furniture pieces wherever I might put some clay. Turns out very beautiful. Adds a little bit of shimmer. And it's almost like gilding wax. But only you can customize this. Mix it up till you're happy with it and you're going to notice it literally looks like a paint. It does not have a sheen to it any longer. It's completely gone. So I'm just going to dab this off and then we're going to take our glass piece. Feel free to clean these. I always recommend if you're doing glass, clean them suckers up. Make sure that you dry them up because you don't want to get little fingerprints and have anything between whatever you're applying to your glass. I got gloves on, so I feel fuzzy inside with this. And then I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap. This is a personal preference whenever I'm doing glass. I feel like the first coat always goes on best, even if I'm just painting it. And I'm using paint to get the sponge on here. So I'm just going to tap this all over the place and get our first coat on here. I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to set this on the little tacky bottle to kind of just dry right there. You know, wing it. Use what you got, people. All right. Tacky bottle. Tacky glue bottle. Okay, we're going to set that off. Now we're going to close this one up and I'm going to mix up another color. We're gonna take the Mod Podge again, eyeball it with love. Let's bust out this beautiful baby blue color. Oh, see, that's why I overshot it, making a mess. All right, let me get that real quick. So like I was saying a couple minutes ago, I had a wonderful person in the comments, you know, get a little spoon or something and dig it out instead of tappity tap tap tapping because sometimes it just gets wild and you can't trust the mica powder <laughs> now i'm just taking a little stick and mixing this up and then i'm gonna oh i made a mess and then i'm going to use a little kitchen sponge this time to apply it on our next little tea light 
And just like with the gold one, you'll mix it until it actually looks like a paint color and then you're ready to use it. Remember I said you can use a little kitchen sponge. Here's one. We're just going to dab it in here and tap, 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 tap all over it, getting a nice coat on this piece. I'm going to do the same thing, find something for it to sit on and just kind of push it off to the side. I want to show you that you can also use this on wood. We're going to just take a little bit and I'm not even going to tap this on here. I'm just going to paint it on here. You can use a paintbrush if you want. If you add the cool thing with this also is if you add some paint to this mixture, it creates a puffy paint almost. It has a really awesome texture that gives you a puffy paint look. I'll pop a picture up here that I did on a piece of glass of a lion stencil. It looks amazing. So here you go. Here's a nice little unique color. And again, it looks just like paint right now. So we're going to let all this dry for a couple minutes and I'll be right back. So please keep in mind, this is not a craft that is quick and easy. Okay. This craft is easy, but it is not quick. It is going to take some patience with the drying. As you can see here, this is mostly dry and I am going to take a little bit more and we're going to do a second coat. Here is two coats on the wood and as you can see we can really stop here look how shimmery and metallic that is it's gorgeous here's two layers on our little tea cup and I'm I gotta be honest like or tea candle what tea light tea cup does this look like a tea cup brandy it's a f we need another coat on here for sure Here's our gold one. It's got a little piece of blue on there. They touched, my bad. You can see that gold shimmer coming out. Super pretty. I'm going to put another coat on these two glass pieces. Once your pieces are dry, feel free to decorate these however you want. I'm just going to take a little stencil here and a little bit of texture paste from Tim Holtz. Again, use whatever y'all want, and we're just going to pop a little snowflake on this joint, maybe a couple. But I just want to show you guys how versatile this stuff is, and it's really easy to use. Look how pretty that is with that glimmer going on. Super pretty. Pop another one right here. There you go. I also want to show you that you can also put this stuff, and I said I've used this before on furniture to enhance like little accents. Since this is a medium that has texture to it, look at that. You can pop it right over it. So all I'm doing is since I covered up the snowflakes i'm now just going to take a little bit of that paint on my fingers and just kind of go over it having the stars kind of pop out a bit and look how beautiful i love this stuff so much it's so metallic i'm just going to add a little bit so this way i don't oh my, i did it anyway what is wrong with me <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a hot mess even on Sundays. I'm just kidding. It's not Sunday. It really is a Tuesday. And before I share the reveal real quick, I want to show you this little piece that I made over Christmas. It's a little decoupage background. This is something you can do that is really cool with the white pigment. I would have liked this a little bit 
thicker or not thicker, <laughs> thinner, a little bit more translucent. And all that would have needed to take place for that to happen is just to me to add a little bit less of the pigment to the Mod Podge and just do one coat. But I think this is such a cool effect for you to be able to see a design through the mica powder paint. And here are our final results. This has five coats of paint on it. This one has four, okay? And at this point, if you wanted it to be a little bit more smooth, take a paintbrush at this point. You don't have to tapity tap, tap, tap anymore. You could use a paintbrush and go over this and do nice thin layers. It gets smoother with each pass. I also decided to add in two more with our little collection here, just so you could see the different variations and layers. This right here has one coat and you can see how translucent that is. And this one right here has two coats. It's not as just, you know, a tiny bit different. This one has the four and this one has the five. So as you see, the more you do, the more solid it comes and they're all beautiful and shimmery. That's going to be it for this tutorial Tuesday, people. If you have any additional questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. Hopefully this helps answer some questions I get on a regular about this whenever I use it in the comments. I'll now have this little video as a reference and until next time. Bye!